it's Steve Scott with Come Follow Me. We are doing the Book of Enos all the way to the Words of Mormon, but up here it looks like W of M. That's where we are. If you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. Thanks to everyone who shares these videos. Buckle up. Get your scriptures, your scripture markers, and your scriptures out. It's time for us to connect up. We are doing a lesson today called The Wrestle is Real. If you need a screenshot right now, take a screenshot. There you go. And then I also have things available on thestevescott.com. You can find downloads, screenshots, and the handout that goes with today's lesson. Guys, we are studying today's lesson. We're in the book of Enos. We're going to jump right into it, and I'm going to show you a couple things. I want to show you and give a little shout out to my friend Ryan. My friend Ryan is really good at working wood. He's a woodworker. He does it on the side. Actually, he's an accountant, but he's a really good worker, woodworker. Now, listen, here's a piece of wood that he gave me, and he was like, let me show you something. And he took me out to his shop, and he took this piece of wood right here, and he made it into something. He put it on a lathe, and he took some tools. Now, he's a master at this. He's really, really good. And he decided out of this piece of wood, and he does it quite often, to make a little baby rattle. Isn't that cool? I watched him do it, and then afterwards, I thought of the comparison and also the, um, the gospel principle that went along with it. Oftentimes, we talk about faith. And today we're going to talk about Enos and his whole experience and about his wrestle. But I want to talk to you a little bit about faith and how faith and works go together in this whole experience. That the Lord can make us out of us something better than we can make out of ourselves. So I found this this week and I was like, man, that is a great gospel principle. If you were to write in your journal right now, what is it that the Lord wants you to accomplish especially in world situations that we're living in and what's happening right now, what does the Lord want you to accomplish and what is his purpose for you? It's an important thing to remember. Now, I want to be able to read you a, um, a story today. This story is, now it's funny, you know, I still have these in a binder. These were given to me by my grandfather. He mailed them to me every week on my mission. He ma mailed me a letter and a spiritual thought. I kept every one of those spiritual thoughts in a binder, and I'm super glad I did. And I found this one today. I think it goes along well with the lesson, and we're going to talk about the wrestle being real, but it is a wrestle. Now, here's, what it, here's a quick little story. The story is told of a lazy boy who went with his mother and aunt on a berry-picking hike into the woods. He carried the smallest pail possible. You guys have kids like that, for a chance? I have a couple. While the others worked hard at picking berries, he lollied about chasing a butterfly and playing hide and seek with a squirrel. Soon, it was approaching time to leave. In a panic, he filled his pail mostly with moss and then topped it off with a thin layer of blueberries so that the pail looked full of berries. His mother and his aunt commended him on his highly for his efforts. Well, the next morning, his mother baked pies and she made a special pie for this little boy. He could hardly wait for it to cool. Blueberry pie was his favorite. He could see those blump or plump berries oozing through, it, through the crust and his mouth watered in anticipation. However, as he sunk his fork into the flaky pie crust, he found moss. Many people who want to experience the fullness of God's promises in their lives but are unwilling to do the work that goes along with it. Most of God's promises are if-then statements. If we do one thing, God will do another. Our part nearly always comes first. Isn't that a great little story? How many of you guys want a pie? I do. But think of this. Today we are going to study the book of Enos. Some of us might think, I've studied the book of Enos multiple times in my life. I know what it's about. But I have a scripture study tip for you today, and it's this. Look for patterns. As you study your scriptures, look for patterns. Repeated patterns of, of writing that the author does. And you will find that the pattern for the book of Enos isn't just about prayer. That is just part of it. But there is a pattern that's here. And so today's lesson called The Wrestle is Real. Let's talk about Enos for a second. Okay, Enos chapter 1 verse 1. Behold, it came to pass that I, Enos knowing my father that he was a just man, for he taught me in his language and in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And blessed be the name of God for it. 
and I will tell you of the wrestle which I had before God before I received a remission of my sins. Here's the point. Enos, the wrestle to receive a remission of his sins. The purpose in writing the book of Enos that he is sharing with us is to show us about the wrestle that he had to receive a remission of sins. Now, this pattern is for all of us. I mean, raise your hand if you really need a remission of sins daily. President Nelson's pretty clear that we are to repent daily. And Enos shows us the pattern. I put together just today's lesson in a pattern that you can see all this that came together to teach Enos how to receive a remission of his sins. So, shall we jump to it? Now, here's a little side note. One time, you might, <laughs> I don't recommend this really, but one time for family home evening when my boys were little, we had five little boys. And for family home evening, I didn't think much was getting through, to be honest with these little boys. And so the lesson was, and I'll tell you the wrestle I had before God. That was the, that was the title of the lesson. And then from that point on, we commenced to wrestle. The whole family home evening, that's all we did. We just wrestled. And uh, I don't think I ever taught them this part. Because, it, but, but it was fun. I mean, we found that the younger boys could often outmaneuver the older boys, which was highly exciting in the family and lots of cheering. And after everyone was wrestled, there was a lot of crying in dessert. Okay, so here's, here's the point that I want to make today. Today's lesson is the wrestle is real to receive a remission of sins. The wrestle is real. Now, in a world right now that is preaching and teaching, um, social distancing to or to protect ourselves, I want to teach you that God does not practice social distancing. In fact, God practices social like inclusiveness and drawing close. Come draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. Come, come follow me. He really invites us in. And this lesson is about inviting us in to receive a remission of our sins. So it follows this pattern. The first thing that Enos recognized is the teachings of his parent in verse 1. Now he said that. He's like, I knew that my dad was a just man. So think of Enos. His dad is Jacob. His uncle is Nephi. His grandfather is Lehi. He has lots of really good examples in his life. But he still has to figure out the wrestle to find a remission of his sins. He, in essence, he's trying to find his own personal testimony. So the teachings of our parents and the teachings of parents in this point, in this, in this uh, verse, becomes really important for us to understand that that started a little spark in his life, but it did not um, create the fire. And it was super important for him to have parents that taught him this. Now, some of you who are, who are listening to this right now haven't had those experiences where you've had parents or positive examples to be able to teach you the gospel of Jesus Christ. And do you know what? This is also a story about you, where you then could be the parent and you then follow the same pattern that Enos follows. So let's get to the next part. So we get Enos's plan of the wrestle to receive a remission of sins, the teachings of his parents, and then the first thing that he does is recognizing the spirit. So he's going to teach us the wrestle. He's like, verse 3, Behold, I went to hunt beasts in the forest, and the words which I had often heard my father speak concerning eternal life and the joy of the saints sunk deep into my heart. Guys, if, if someone ever tried to explain how you feel and recognize the Spirit, Enos gives us the first clue. That as he went to hunt beasts in the forest, the words which he had often heard his father speak concerning eternal life and the joy of the saints sunk deep into his heart. Into his heart. Well, go across the page into verse 10 and notice this. And while I was thus struggling in the spirit, behold, the voice of the Lord came into my mind again. Let's teach just for a minute, and especially if little kids are watching or teenagers are watching. There's two ways. Can you write this in your journal and have this discussion? There's two ways that the spirit speaks to us. Number one is through feelings that we have in our heart. Oftentimes in the church, they'll refer to it as a burning in the bosom. Okay, I never understood that phrase. It was very weird to me. Um, but I do understand feelings. Now, some of the teenage boys that are watching would be like, feelings? Really? No, truly, feelings. And the more you can become in tune with your feelings of, oftentimes people will say when they felt a prompting is, I don't know, I just had a feeling. Follow those feelings and they'll teach you something. The other thing that kids have always asked me and people have always asked, how do I know the difference between my thoughts 
and maybe an, a thought that comes from the Holy Ghost. So I have a couple things that I want to teach you. Turn to Doctrine and Covenants, section 8, verse 2 and 3. Doctrine and Covenants, section 8, <clears throat> verse 2 and 3. This is an amazing scripture when it comes to receiving revelation. And it talks about Moses. When Moses got to the border of the Red Sea, and he did not know what to do. I, I always thought it was funny because I always thought, when I was younger, I thought maybe God was like, Moses. And uh, it didn't happen that way according to chapter section 8, verse 2 and 3. He said, Behold, I will tell you in your mind and in your heart by the Holy Ghost, which shall come upon you and which shall dwell in your heart. Now behold, this is the spirit of revelation. Behold, this is the spirit by which Moses brought the children of Israel through the Red Sea on dry ground. So Moses had a feeling and a thought and an action. And when he followed through with that, a miracle happened. A miracle happened. Do you notice the same thing happens with Enos? Enos here remembers his family, his, his dad's teaching, goes to hunt bees, and the words he'd often sunk into his heart, and then the voice of the Lord came into his mind. Well, how do you know if it's your own thoughts or the voice of the Spirit? Moroni chapter 7. In Moroni chapter 7, we get an interesting teaching from Moroni. Um, verse 13, Moroni seven thirteen. But behold, that which is of God inviteth and enticeth to do good continually. Wherefore, everything which inviteth and enticeth to do good and to love God and serve Him is inspired of God. So if I have a thought to go do something good for somebody, follow it. If I have a thought that I need to be able to act in faith and move forward and help someone and assist someone, especially in these times right now, then follow it. Enos gives us an awesome example. Now the same thing comes as we begin to gain our own personal testimony and the wrestle that is real of to receive a remission of sins. We will have feelings and the Spirit will invite. And Enos has that first. The next thing we need to understand in the wrestle to receive an, a, a remission of sins is a desire to know the truth or a hunger. And back in the book of Enos, as we get this story of Enos, he says, and my soul hungered. This is verse 4. And my soul hungered. That is so such a strong word. Hi highlight this verse. And I kneeled down before my maker. And I cried unto him in mighty prayer. Circle mighty. And supplication for mine own soul. And all the day long did I cry unto him. Yea, and when the night came, I did still raise my voice high that it reached the heavens. This is a powerful, powerful verse on prayer. Powerful. I want you to spend some time in this and look at the words. Hungered. Mighty. Supplication. Um, like all day long. I remember just being at the end of my mission just really, really tired. Really tired one night. And just physically exhausted. And I knelt down about 10 o'clock to say a prayer. And uh, the next thing I remember about 3 o'clock in the morning was waking up and on my knees, and my bones were sore, and my muscles were locked, and I just, oh, I couldn't believe it, and I dragged myself into bed. Next morning, I asked my companion, I was like, dude, why didn't you wake me up? And he's like, I don't know, maybe you were just being like Enos. You were going to go all night long. I didn't want to interrupt. I didn't know. And I was like, wow, that would be a long prayer. But I want you to recognize that it's the hunger and intention in the prayer that is super important. And all day long, Enos raised his voice to God in prayer and supplication for his own soul. Now, you've probably heard the basic seminary prayer from a youth. We're thankful for this day. Take this lesson into our daily lives. Bless those who aren't there this time. They'll come next time. Travel home and safely. That, that would not be a prayer that would probably hit the roof. But you'll notice his prayer, I did raise my voice high that it reached the heavens. The heavens. These were heavenly prayers. So take a personal prayer evaluation right now. How are your personal prayers? How are your prayers with yourself and with your Heavenly Father? Are you really in, in communication with your Heavenly Father? You know, 
It's simple. When Jesus said, come follow me, the simple way is to just fall on your knees to follow him and uh, get in communication. You know, a text message to Heavenly Father is just kneeling down. And I love this pattern. Follow the pattern again. The wrestle to receive a remission of our sins. Um, follow the teachings of those who have taught us. Remember what has been taught and look towards that. Recognize the spirit that has prompted our heart and to our mind. Next, a desire to know and a hunger for the truth. That is super important for us. And the next one is sincere prayer that reaches. Sincere reaching prayer. Sincere reaching prayer. And then personal repentance. Personal repentance. So verse 4 through 8... I highlighted it in a couple different colors. I highlighted it in green because it dealt with prayer. But I highlighted it in purple. And look at this. When Enos did this, verse 5, there came a voice unto me saying, Enos, thy sins are forgiven thee, and thou shalt be blessed. And I, Enos, knew that God could not lie. Wherefore, my guilt was swept away. And I said, Lord, how, how is this done? And he said unto me, Because of thy faith in Christ, whom thou hast never before heard nor seen. And many years pass away before he shall minister himself, manifest himself in the flesh. Wherefore, go to. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Personal repentance. I should add there sincere high-reaching prayer and faith. Um, but personal repentance. Personal repentance. That's the wrestle is real. Enos is showing us the pattern to be able to receive a personal testimony and to be able to receive a remission of our sins, and it's real. Isn't that awesome? That's amazing. The last thing that Enos does. Now it came to pass in verse 9, it says, Now it came to pass when I had heard these words, I began to feel a desire for the welfare of my brethren the Nephites, wherefore I did pour out my whole soul unto God for them. That underline that phrase wherefore i did pour out my whole soul unto god for them those that he loved and those that he was in stewardship over and those who he had like priesthood responsibility he prayed and prayed and prayed you know i remember elder Uchtdorf saying multiple times um if only the church could hear the words that president monson prayed about them and how he spoke of them in his prayers i would love to have heard that and, but I think of that one, you guys, one of the best things I ever experienced, my grandparents, the same one who gave me that, that story, my grandparents were older and, and I was living next door to them and my grandpa needed help getting into bed and so did my grandma. I remember one of the sweetest opportunities I had. Now I'm one grandchild in a line of lots, like 50 something or 60. I don't even know the number, but there's lots of first cousins on my side. And I'm one of the older ones. I think my youngest my youngest cousin, I think she's six, about. Oh, so shout out to Adara, my little dear. Um, <clears throat> now, in this moment, as I went with my grandparents, as they were in their 80s, my grandpa asked me to help him into bed. And before he got to bed, he said, would you like to join grandma and me in prayer? What a privilege. What a privilege. As I was able to kneel down and watch my grandparents hold hands and listen to my grandma pray for her family. I mean, whoo, guys, even thinking about it right now, just the, the absolute like power of prayer from this grandmother. And, uh, and I felt it for her generations of children and her grandchildren. That is the power of prayer. Enos shows us that once we receive a remission of our own sins, that we pray for others in the same, and you'll notice this pattern continues. It goes like this, pattern, 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 pray for others. They then desire the wrestle, and then they follow the same pattern. It, it is a continual pattern to receive a, a remission of sins, and that's why the wrestle is real. Um, and he poured out his whole soul for their welfare, and not only those for whom he loved, but in verse 11, And as I, Enos, had heard these words, my faith began to be unshaken in the Lord, and I prayed with him many long strugglings for my brethren, the Lamanites. Isn't that amazing? His brethren, the Lamanites, the people that were like the ones hardest on him, the ones he struggled with the most, he prayed for them. 
brothers and sisters, as you are following this pattern of being redeemed and, and being able to receive a remission of your sins, do we not pray for others who are also needing a remission of their sins? Perhaps those, um, man, I remember Neil A. Maxwell quote while I was in a missionary meeting one time. He said, true charity is serving those who hurt less than we do. And I thought, man, who, do, who, am, I willing, who am I able to serve today? And um, praying for those. Well, do you remember my story in the very beginning? How, and I showed you this thing right here. Well, God is able to be able to give us and make more out of us um, than we think we're able to. My invitation to you today is to recognize what is God or Heavenly Father trying to do and what is he making you into? Remember the story, it requires faith. Now compare the rest of our studies for this week. We get, compare Enos to Omni, Amaron, Chemish, Abinadom, and Amalekai. Compare to those guys. If you'll study the rest of that, like Jacob, Enos, Jerem, Omni, so Jerem, Omni, study those guys. Like you look at most of the pattern, it's like, behold, I was wicked and I was lazy and uh, I didn't do this, so I'll give this to my brother. Um, I was wicked, I was lazy, and I'll just give this to my brother. There's patterns. There's patterns of unrighteousness and there's patterns of righteousness. I choose righteousness. Isn't that amazing? Enos is so much of a pattern. It's not just about prayer. Now, I have a challenge for you. Okay? I was talking with my sister last night, and it's funny because I had the same prompting to share with you today as she talked to me about last night. We said, here's my challenge for you in this moment of which we live. My challenge to you is before you go to bed, the last thing that you do in the day, the last thing, don't look at your phone after, don't look at, but you get on your knees and you offer a Enos sincere prayer. And then you go to bed this week. Do not look at anything else. You, you, talk, you talk distancing, talk about social distancing with God. Let's talk about bringing it really close. And then the first thing that you do in the morning, do not look at your phone. Don't roll over and look at your phone. Is to pray. The first thing. And petition the Lord. And prayer. Can you imagine, and I know this is real, of, of the millions of people that are currently praying to God in behalf of others. Um, as well as me praying for you. That is my challenge for you this week. To do that. Um, for those of you who watched the end of the videos and you're waiting for a word... The word this week is prayer. If you could leave prayer in the comment section down below, just prayer for those that we are praying for and following this Enos experience. My other thing that I'm doing, guys, if you haven't noticed and you didn't know, you can follow me on social media. Um, on my Facebook page, um, The Steve Scott, on my, per, on my page, I'm doing morning um, go and do daily, just a 15 minute little videos. Um, to help people in their go and do studies and their in their come follow me studies. Um, if you have any kids that are at home and needing just a little boost, you're welcome to tune in. I do Facebook Live. It's 9 a.m. Mountain Time, but you can catch the replay. I'd love to be, interact with you there and be able to talk with you there. Don't forget, you can do the downloads at thestevescott.com. That'll be up later on. I'll get those all available. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Remember to stay safe and uh, follow this pattern. May the Lord bless you. Love you. Bye.